Oh, and Saturday, yeah, that's what I did. Saturday, unfortunately, I decided to go to a pub and watch um, Liverpool v Tottenham in the Champions League final. Of course, you know, being a United fan, I was cheering on Tottenham, hoping that they would um, cause some kind of an upset. I think because on paper, you would say Liverpool were probably the favourites. You say maybe on current form, they're probably the favourites too, having probably beaten a better side in Barca, even though, you know, Tottenham beat I- Ajax, who weren't, you know, they're not, um, that's not a gimme, but, you know, they probably beat the better side in that re- in that regard. They probably, they finished just, you know, just behind City. They pushed them right towards the end, even though City have spent more money than God on their squad. So you'd say Tottenham were probably the underdogs in that match. But, um, but they kind of, you kind of hope they were going to give it a good go. And unfortunately, well, unfortunately, I think for us, uh, for for us um, United fans, Tottenham didn't really put up much of a fight. Really, um, it kind of felt a bit flat. It didn't feel like the, it didn't feel like the performance or the Champions League that we kind of deserved, having come from you know these really stellar group phases and great knockout stage matches. It kind of felt a bit flat in the final, which is understandable. I think both sides were very nervous. Both sides came into it really hoping they'd win something at the end of the season, right? I think Pochettino has kind of done well to kind of, you know, stem the kind of, um, uh, what would you say? He's, he's done well to kind of stem the hype, right? And kind of dumb down his kind of influence and how far Tottenham can go. He's kind of put things in perspective and say, you know, the money they haven't spent and the fact that they're kind of, you know, punching above their weight with where they are and, you know, the, the amount they spent on the new stadium and they can't really spend as much on the club. You know, the the, the trophies isn't everything because, you know, again, trophies only a certain, there's only a certain amount of trophies out there in one season, right? I think in, in a particular any given season, there's, there's four trophies to win. Um, so you're not going to win every single one and every team wants to win a trophy for the most part. So he's done a good job at doing that, but you did feel like in the last few weeks, especially with his reaction after knocking out Ajax, you did feel like some of the pressure that he was obviously feeling for not winning a trophy ever in his career was it was, it was finally starting to get to him, right? Because I think if you want to be regarded as one of the top coaches in the world, top coaches in Europe, let alone in, let alone in the world, you have to win something. It's just one of those things. I don't, I don't think this new... I don't think, I don't, I don't think this new um, way of looking at trophies is going to really enamor him to the history books or to most fans in general. I think there is something to be said for, you know, if you're Watford, if you're Wolves, if you're Everton, maybe your trophies isn't a beyond end all, right? You want to see an improvement in your squad or your team season in, season out, right? You want to see in the steps in the right direction because you've had so many false dawns being an Everton fan or, yeah, for the most part, Everton fan, you've had a lot of false dawns under, under Moyes, under Martinez, under successful managers after that, right? You've had kind of loads of ebbs and flows, so you want to see a consistent improvement. But I think if you're a Tottenham and you finish third, uh, if you're a Tottenham and you have, you know, maybe one of the best, the best English striker playing up front for you, you have a really good team, you have a really good team camaraderie, uh, com- camaraderie you have a really good philosophy, you play a really good attacking style of football, um, you know, you have manager Pochettino is able to kind of, you know, um, buff up diamonds or shine, you know, turn rocks into diamonds. He's able to really improve the players he has already in his squad. He's raises the fitness levels. All those things involved, you expect to win something, 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 especially considering that all the other teams are going to improve over the next couple of seasons, right? Arsenal lost um, out of the Europa League against Chelsea. You know, they're going to improve. Chelsea are definitely going to improve, whether with Sarri or without Sarri. Um, United will probably end up spending a, lot, a bucket load of cash. Man City will end up doing the same thing as well. So you have to kind of hope, you have to win what you can win at the time it's given because you're never sure when it's going to come back around again. I think Liverpool are very aware of this fact, right? They want a Champions League this time around, but there's no there's no guarantee at all they're going to win it again next season, right? It's probably likely they're probably not going to win it. They're probably going to get knocked out in the group stages. So you felt as if Tottenham had, were going to try and do something, but at the end of it, I think... Um, Liverpool were able to kind of squeak by and kind of get a professional, I say, Champions League final win. Even though the first goal was a bit dubious, I wasn't really sure that was a handball. Uh, Mane kind of flicks the ball into um, to Soko's armpit as, as a Soko's trying to point to his defenders to try and get in line, right? So that was a bit unfortunate in that regard, very unintentional. I'm not sure if Mane actually aimed it at his um, arm through to get in handball, but regardless, um, the referee gave it. And I guess with VAR, maybe it was the right decision because they looked over and said, yeah, his hand was in an unnatural position, but he's actually pointing to defenders. Things that happen, what can you do? And then from there, you never thought was if Tottenham were ever going to score. Most of it had to do maybe with the lack of form that Harry Kane was in. I think that was a big call for Pochettino to drop Lucas Moura and bring Harry Kane in. I think obviously if Tottenham would have won, people would have said it was a masterstroke. But I think at the time, 
I was uh, I was a little bit annoyed by that. I think if you're Lucas Moura or if you're any player, I think coming off the back of scoring a hat trick in the Champions League semi final against Ajax, you'd expect to play the next game, right? Regardless of who's on the bench. I think the only exception I think you'd make is if like it was Messi or Ronaldo. But I don't think Harry Kane is that much of a difference maker that you'd have to start him over um, Lucas Moura. I think you could easily have Harry Kane play with Lucas Moura up front. Um, that would be good. Just have both of them start. Have maybe Lucas Moura play Lucas Moura play more of a number ten role, or have him play out wide. Um, what him on the right, uh, maybe um, with Son playing out on the left, cutting in that might work. But I don't think dropping them all together was the right action, in my opinion. Of, overall, again, you know, managers, managers, this is where they earn their bread and butter. This is where they kind of separate themselves from the pack. So maybe that was something that he really analyzed and thought was the best decision, but it didn't happen. And then from then on, I think Liverpool did a good job of kind of stemming the flow, uh, counter-attacking where it need be. And then they effectively scored two important goals. One at right at the beginning, within the first five minutes, and then one right towards the end in the 87th minute, which effectively killed the game uh, for them going forward. So yeah, um, Liverpool won. You know, again, like I said, um, really disheartening for United fans. I think we feel, you know, depressed because our season's getting worse and worse having seen Liverpool trudge around in the Champions League. But I think, the, I think I would much prefer Liverpool to win the Champions League to win the Premier League. But again, I think as all things go, in terms of fairness, in terms of the way they've played, I think Liverpool did deserve to win, did deserve to come out of the season with something, right? Some kind of trophy. I think that season, having pipped, just get pipped to the, champ, to the Premier League by Man City, and again, like I said, Man City are going to spend more money than God this summer again to re-strengthen their side. I think they've done a really good job. And, you know... Again, I think that final was a, evidence was kind of a showcase of two of the best, one, well, two of the most well-run clubs in the league, isn't it? Right, battling out for Champions League place, no coincidence, really. Right, two well-run clubs really doing the bits and really smashing. It. And then the other side, the Europa League side, you have got two clubs that are not that well-run, but irrespective of how L, uh, not well-run they are, they still manage to sometimes get to those kind of stages of the competition. Chelsea being the one of them, it's like I never understand the Chelsea thing, right? They have a change room that's of decidedly split. Um, the police car going by. Yeah, they have a change room that's always split up. That's kind of split in a the camp. They have uh, managers that are you know quite volatile and don't necessarily get on with the most players. They have a boardroom that's you know hit or miss. They have an owner that's a little bit you know ephemeral, and then. This year, yet yeah, they somehow always kind of get to the end of the Champions League. Yeah, some, sometimes always get to the end of a cup run and are there competing there or thereabouts. So it's a very, very bizarre thing they're able to do. But I guess maybe that's the cultivation of years and years of strong personalities in their squad that's able to kind of like trudge along. Because you feel like Chelsea, apart from any club in the Premier League, are probably the only one that could probably get away with having an entire season you know, managed by a caretaker manager or managed by you know an, an under-18 manager. And they'll do perfectly just fine. They have enough personalities in that squad to kind of figure shit out as they go along. But yeah, Liverpool won. Congratulations to them. I think next season will be interesting to see how they go about things. I think Klopp has obviously shown that he's probably one of the best managers in the world, if not Europe, with the way he's able to kind of, you know, to, um, uh, put together a squad full of players that, you know, for, on paper are quite average, but then bring their levels up, you know, considerable amounts, sprinkling in of quality here and there. And, you know, if he's backed again in the Champions Windows and is able to add a few more well star players in there, they're going to be a real, real, real threat uh, to the league overall going forward. So, yeah, I'm um, crashing to them. And, yeah, um, it helps to be a United fan nowadays. Um, 